So this is video number two of our knee series. If you haven't yet gone through video number one, I highly recommend it. This will make so much more sense. I will warn you, it is a little bit long. I do talk a little bit too much, but um, it's all good stuff. I promise you that. Um, it basically gets you into the right thought process of, of where your imbalances are in your body and how those imbalances are affecting your knee health and how you can change small daily habits to um, strengthening your knee joints and, well, actually, your entire body. But this is the knee series, so we're going to stick with knee talk. Um, today, we are just going to focus on your feet. It's going to be a short video, just a couple little foot exercises that you can do while you're sitting at your desk, while you're watching TV, or even standing in your bathroom brushing your teeth, right? So pretty simple. Um, and we're just going to start. I'm on a ball. You don't need to be on a ball. You can be on a chair. You can even be standing. You don't even need to be sitting. I have a towel, just a kitchen towel. You can use any washcloth, anything you have. Um, and I will explain that you don't need a towel to do this all the time. But for today's sake, we're going to start with that. So let's get into the feet because feet are huge um, in knee health because if we're not supported in our feet, if we don't have the foundation from our feet, we're just going to crumble the rest of the way up. It's just like a building, right? You need the foundation to be nice and strong. And so um, that's why I want to start this second video with, with the feet. So um, to start, I just want you to remember when we were standing in video number one and I had you dropping and lowering your arches to the floor and I had you lifting your arches back up and we saw how that affected your knees. Um, and so we're going to do some arch work today, some strengthening of the arches. Support and strength of your arches are key to knee health. And for so many years, we have been walking in casts, right? And I say casts because our tennis shoes have gotten so supportive that we don't allow our own body to support us anymore. So our tennis shoes have just been so supported around our foot, whether we have arch supports in them or the ankle stabilizers around, you know, um, that we're not truly relying on our own muscles, our own ligaments and tendons to support our foot and to support us the rest of the way up. So when we take off our shoes and we're walking around barefoot, we're like, oh man, my, my feet hurt. I got to have shoes on all the time. But that's really not the right answer. The right answer is to strengthen your your muscles in your feet and ankles and so that you can use your own muscles for balance, right, and support. So that's today's video. So I encourage barefoot training um, slowly. If you haven't barefoot trained before, you're going to do it very slowly um, and with control because those muscles are not used to doing that. You'll notice on the market there's a lot more barefoot shoes, running shoes with little toe cutouts. I don't actually use those, so I'm not I'm not telling you to go out and buy new shoes or anything. I'm just saying walk around barefoot once in a while and, and use your own muscles to lift those arches and use your own muscles to find that ankle balance and strength. So enough about that. Okay, let's get let's move right along to our exercises of our feet. You're just gonna sit or stand, whichever you feel more comfortable, and I just want you um, to keep your heels on the ground, but lift all ten toes up. And so maybe it would be easier sitting to lift your toes up, or maybe if you're standing, just do one foot at a time, right? So you have your balance or hold on to something. So with all 10 toes up, can you separate them? Just look at them. Can you get daylight between all 10 toes, okay? And now set all 10 toes down, kind of like you're playing on the piano, you know, one at a time. Just set all 10 toes down. Do that again. Lift them all up. And now when they're all lifted, is the ball mount of the foot down? So the ball of the foot between your big toe and little toe, is it still on the ground or did it have to lift up too? Okay, just notice. And then set them back down. Now this time when you lift, can you lift without lifting the ball mount of your foot? Can you keep the pinky toe area down, not the toe, but the ball mount, and keep the big toe ball down as well? But all 10 toes are lifted, they're stretched, you see daylight between each one, and then you set them back down. Good, now can you lift just the big toes? right? Keep the rest of the toes down. It's hard. You'll see me struggle at this too. And then set the big toes down. Can you lift just the pinky toes? I know it's hard. All of them want to come up, but do your best. And can you do that without rolling out on your foot? So continue, lift the big toe, but keep the ball mount of your big toe down. And yes, the second and third toes are going to want to lift, but you're going to do your best to keep them down. And then when you lift your pinky toe up, can you keep the ball mount of your Pinky toes down. See, I told you I'd be struggling. And set them down. Now, let's just concentrate on one foot. Let's concentrate on your, your left foot. Lift the pinky toe up. 
keep the big toe down. Good. Now set the pinky toe down, but can you keep the three center toes up? Okay. And then set everything down. Stay on that left foot. Let's do that again. This time, lift all five toes up on your left side. Set your pinky toe down. Now, can you set your big toe down without lowering the three middle toes? This side is very hard for me. I can do it on one foot, not so much on this foot. So you might have to help yourself out a little bit with your hands. But you're trying to keep the three little toes up and the big toe down and the pinky toe down. Okay? And then rest. Let's go to the right foot. So let's lift all five toes up on the right foot. Set your big toe down and set your pinky toe down. These three little toes stay up. And on this side, I have a lot more flexibility. I can do that without a struggle. And then rest. And you might notice the same in your body, that one foot has more flexibility and ability to move than the other. Lift all five toes up one more time on that right side. Set your pinky toe down first. And then set your big toe down. Can you keep those three little toes up? And then rest. Now, it might feel kind of goopy that we're doing this, but you should be able to have the dexterity in your toes similar to your fingertips, right? Okay, maybe not as much, but it should be along the same lines. But we keep such tight shoes on, whether um, they're dress shoes or athletic shoes, they're so tight that we keep our toes all the way together, right? And they don't have the chance throughout the day to spread open and apart. So I want you, whether you're sitting at your desk, kick your shoes off and start to get daylight between those toes. Start to wiggle them around independently, not all at once, okay? And then maybe work your way up so that your whole foot is circling, so you're opening up the ankle. And when you're circling the foot, open your toes, separate them apart. Slow it down and you'll notice you'll get a bigger range of motion. You'll feel the arch stretch, the top of the foot, side of the foot, middle of the foot, and then do the other side and make sure and go both directions. And just do this every so often throughout your day, right? Just take a break. It just takes a minute and then go the other direction because our feet are our support. Remember, they're the base of our house, our body. They're the support systems. If your feet are not strong and mobile, the rest of your body is going to follow suit, okay? Set your feet down. Now, I have, a, like I said, a kitchen towel. You can um, even use a paper towel. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be specific. Or you can, like I said, if you're standing at the bathroom sink and you have a rug underneath you, use the rug, okay? Slippery the better. You're going to put your left foot on that towel or the rug or whatever you have. And I want you to keep your heel down here. You're going to lift all five toes up. Spread them apart, set the five toes down, and I want you to grab that towel and pull that towel towards your heel, and then open, spit that towel out, separate those toes, and set your toes back down. We're going to do that again. So grab the towel with your toes, pull in, right, towards your heel, and then you lift up, you open, you spit that towel out like you're throwing it, separate those heels, or separate the heels, separate the toes, and set your toes back down. Now, when you do this, I want you to feel like you're making a bridge with your foot. You're making a, a cup, an arch, right? So that a little mouse could walk underneath that bridge. Okay, so let's open those toes. Let's do that again. I'm going to go to the side a little bit more. And so I want you to see my foot. When I'm cupping it in, I want you to cup the lateral part of your foot, the outside, equal to the inside, the medial part. So it's you're not rolling onto the outer edge of your foot. A lot of times when we work our arches, we roll. Try not to roll. Because if you notice, if I allow myself to roll to the outside edge, and this arch is lifted, but I'm rolling out here, look what's happening to my ankle. This side is really short, and this side is really long. So again, if we're talking about balance, one side of our ankle is being stretched. Remember we talked about those ligaments in our joints? And the other side is being really tight. We want to be balanced. So when you cup your foot, your ankle is straight on. You're not rolling in. You're not rolling out. You're making a bridge for a little mouse to go underneath both sides. And so what I want you to feel is the ball mound of your foot from big toe to little toe equally pulling in to the center of your heel, making that bridge, cupping like a bird on a wire, right, with your feet. Let's do the other side. If you start to cramp, that is actually perfectly normal because maybe you haven't moved your muscles like that in quite a, quite a while. So if you're cramping, walk it off, come back to it another time, right? We don't have to work through that cramp, just walk it off. And then as you do this over time, it's gonna get less and less with the cramps of the feet. But I want you to feel the outside 
right, of the arch and the inside of the arch working to lift up like a parachute. Do that again, open and throw it away, and then curl and pull it in towards the middle of your heel. No rolling out, no rolling in. Open and throw it, spread those toes a couple more times. And I want you to think of this dome that you're creating in your arch. If you took my pelvic floor series videos, we talked about domes, right? The dome at your arch talks to the dome of your pelvic floor, right? And it helps it engage. The dome of your pelvic floor not only talks to your abdominals, but talks to the dome of your diaphragm underneath your lungs, your rib cage. The dome of your diaphragm also correlates to the dome of your armpits, the roof of your mouth, and the crown of your head. All those domes, just like a parachute, float up to the sky. They keep you light. They keep you lifted, lengthened, and light, what we, want to, what we want to be when we walk around, right? So if you start at the dome of your foot, that arch, everything follows suit all the way up. So just think about that as you go throughout your day. Go ahead and do that two more times. So you're just going to grab that towel, curl it in, look at your foot, make sure that the knee isn't turning in or out, right? Think about that alignment all the way up. One more time, throw that towel away and then grab and pull it in. Good, and release. Just circle out the foot. Open up those toes, and I'm going to challenge you to get some foot and toe movement in every single day. Like I said, it just takes about 30 seconds to a minute, and um, it's going to correlate all the way up. It's going to help out your ankles, your shins, your knees, thighs, hips, back. The whole body talks to each other. Let's start at the base, and the next video we'll go up for there, from there and talk more about shins, knees, and eventually get up to the thighs and hips, okay? So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I love questions. It kind of gets me going on my next video series, right? And um, play with the feet. Move them around. Get your shoes off. Kick them off and walk around barefoot for a while. Thank you so much, and you have a wonderful day.